Welcome to The Appliance Show. I am Jonathan, The Appliance Dude, here at Curto's in Westchester County. And uh, I'm going to talk about DCS right now. Um, and I need, to, I need to correct an omission. Because some time ago, I posted a, um, um, a segment. It was called DCS Range of View, part one of a three-part series. Now, um, I have been emailed and I have been, I've received phone calls over time from numerous, numerous individuals across the country saying, hey, appliance dude, part one was awesome. Where I um, can't find parts two and three. Well, the problem is I never did them. I thought I did, but I didn't actually record them. So what I'm going to do today is take the time. Uh, and actually, this is going to be combined part two and three of that segment. The issue that I have with DCS at this point, you know, it's a very, uh, the ranges are very polarizing. As you can see, I'm actually sitting in front of one right now in, uh, in uh, full Cesar. And um, the issue I have with this range, and again, this is just simply the appliance dude waxing poetically on my own thing. I mean, I don't like the handle and I don't like, I don't like the, um, there's a grill on the bottom, which to me doesn't work from a design aesthetic. Now, this is the deal. And this is what I've been told. See. Um, well, actually, before I get into what I was told, my guitar teacher, okay, um, I was at his house last week. He said, can you come in the kitchen? I want, I'm having an issue with my hood. He had a Zephyr hood. And I want you just to take a look at something. I went in there, and lo and behold, I'd never been in his kitchen before, and he had a classic DCS range from like 2007 or 2006. And it's funny how similar the capital range, the current capital range looks like the DCS of days gone by. Of course, there was, those companies have a... Uh, have a shared history, we won't get into that right now. But I looked at it and I said, my God, what a beautiful piece of equipment this DCS is. And I mean, you know, DCS has been a brand that traditionally over the years has been purchased by serious cooks. It's never, it wasn't really something that people gravitated to because of a brand standpoint and status and this, the Trophy Kitchen. It was for folks who like to cook. I know a few chefs, a bunch of them actually, a lot of them have DCSs from the early aughts and uh, you know 2007, 8, 9, whatever because the brand was kicking at that time and that was really, they were the leader in performance for, uh, for indoor range performance. And uh, um, I, I looked at what this range looked, I'm like man, why did they change the design? Now let me get back to what I was saying before. Why did they change the design? They felt back three years ago that the pro range market was looking, every, every range looked like one another, thick handles and so on and so forth. And they wanted to move away from it. So it was an absolute ballsy move, okay, from a product design standpoint. I mean, they wanted to differentiate themselves. Unfortunately, what they did, in my opinion, is they created a product that was too polarizing. Because when we bring people over to DCS, this is the reaction. They either love it or they want nothing to do with it. And you can't be, you can't be polarizing like that. You have to allow for some gray area. And, um, and so that's kind of where it is. And I've expressed my, my, uh, my concerns about that uh, quite emphatically to my DCF, DCS representative. And here's what they're doing. And not because I opened my mouth, but this is what they're doing from a corporate standpoint. Number one, the grill at the bottom, which I don't like. You know, and I've been told, hey, listen, man, I mean, what, what's the big deal about it? Sub-Zero has had these grills on the top of their refrigerators for decades. Well, whatever, it works for them. It doesn't work on the range, I don't like it. They now offer an accessory, which is a flat stainless toe kick, okay? So the grill on the bottom is gone if you want it. You can purchase this, this as an accessory. Now, what about the handle? Now, again, the handle, for those, there are some folks who love it because it's actually rounded. You look at it and you say to yourself, oh, this, this handle is square, it's squared off. This is actually going to be quite uncomfortable to open up. No, because when you actually get your, reach your hand behind, it actually is somewhat curved in the back. It's too chunky though. You know, and then you take this range and you actually put it next to, if you're trying to put a whole DCS kitchen together next to the side-by-side -side refrigerator, which has these handles, but they're elongated. I mean, they, they run the, the course of the whole front of the refrigerator. It's just too big, uh, in my opinion, and lots of other opinions of people who've actually come to the store to look at it. So from what I've been told, and again, this is not, um, this is not gospel, but I have been told they are working on some type of redesign of the ranges, maybe in about a year. Uh, a year or two, you know, it takes some time for these things to actually develop and then get out on the floor. But um, I would love to see them offer a different handle option. 
But uh, uh, that's just my opinion, and I think that if they did that, uh, either they change the handle or they go to a different option with the handle, then, well, um, you know, listen, it would, it would actually probably goose their sales because, again, the product is fine. What do you have here? You got three rolling racks. Three, three racks. The meat probe. Um, what else? Very solid clothes. The door, so, the door, you know, for me, I'm, I'm all about doors, doors on fridges, doors on ranges, ovens, and big taste test for me is how these things close. Very nice hinges on here, nice tight seal. Um, that's important and that is actually a, uh, a micro way of looking at the macro situation on how the thing was actually built and the construct behind it.